What is up and welcome to Two Truths and All Facts. Our next topic, I'm, I'm about to throw you for a win. I, I, I want to see what you, how you feel about this. Um, this is more in our real world category of this show. So I was just, you know, scrolling on Facebook and I seen this article today. It said, um, more people or less people are believing in God. 19% of the world uh, does not believe in a God um, or does not identify with the religion. Um, and you know me, I have to check out comments. Comments are so detrimental to my like overall being just because you see a lot of bullshit in it, but I can't stop myself. I can't. And y'all can help me, help me. Cause I really be trying to not read the fucking comments, but I read the comments and it just, it ruins my mood. Okay. It does. I'd be pissed off for a little bit. I have to turn the phone off, but, um, so I was just reading the comments and all of this and, um, they went both ways. And so I, I want to get your perspective on it because um, I like to talk about real shit. Um, and I read this one comment, which made me want to ask this and talk about this on the podcast. I, I read this one comment and was like, what gives you guys the right to even ask people about not believing in God? Like, no one should ask that. And I'm like, how can you say that when people literally go knock door to door asking people, do people, do they know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior? Like, you know, so... Um, I don't know. And see, I don't know. I can't really get down with that. I mean, I know they probably did some mm-hmm. polls here and there, mm-hmm. but I feel like that's not true. I feel mm-hmm. like true. what's really true is we come from a generation where church is boring as hell. We ain't fucking with church. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, but, uh, and then there's, you got, you got all these, uh, these new wave people who, who they might not identify with Christianity, but mm-hmm. they, they still say they spiritual, they still pray, they still, you know, meditate. Um, it's still some kind of religion. It's just like not to the point to where like people saying, oh, he Baptist, he Jewish, he Methodist, he, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I think also rap music uh, or, or just urban culture, uh, what the fuck the urban culture? Black culture has played a lot into people um, identifying more with Islam mm-hmm. and, and Allah. And, um, but as far as like people not believing in God, like, or not believing in a higher power, I, I don't think that's so much true. I think a lot of people still believe in a higher power. They just aren't as aligned with the old ways because oh, yeah. of social media, you know? And oh, I'll, yeah. I'll be the first to say I was never fucking with church because it was, it was a real hypocritical place right you know where you got all these these commandments and these people preaching you how to be right how to be this how to be that you turn around you got the pastor fucking uh uh mr smith's old lady in the in the back right. of the church you know what i'm saying so it's like what's really right what's wrong you know i feel like um some right. people were blessed to have people in their life to tell them okay go explore your own shit mm. go figure it out you know but there is something something higher out here um, and I, I, I mean, I don't sit here and, and Bible thump and, and preach right, and say, right. say I'm a Christian or say I, I worship this, I worship that. But like, if you know me, if you really know me, like if you ever see me with my shirt off, like I got, I got crosses, I got verses, Bible verses that mean something to me tattooed all over me. So it's like, uh, you know, I think we just come from a generation where people have built their own religion and there's not mm-hmm. really a real way to identify it. You know right, right. Um, I personally, I think it's true. I still believe 81, 81% of the population that believes in the, in the God. But this is the reason why I do believe that it's true, that it's increasing. I would say probably in our grandparents' generation, probably over 90% believed in a God. And probably half of that believed in the same God. The reason why I believe that it's increasing is just because of the state of the world that we're in now. And like, I'm not trying to debate like religion or anything, but I do believe that more people are looking for love, more love than less hate. And that was a big argument. Even some people, they're like, hey, I'm not against, you know, believing that there's a higher power, but I just can't get with the way certain people act who are supposed to be you know, with this certain church and I'm not here to bash, you know, Christianity, whatever you believe in, that's your right to believe in it. But I do think more people are just deciding to step away from it in all, at all because there's a lot of fighting, 
a lot of fighting. And I feel like one thing our generation and a lot of people are honestly afraid of, but I feel like it's a good thing. Our generation is more educated than any generation has been in the past. Right, right. We're way more educated, not only when it comes to like textbook education, but we're going out here and we are being afraid to do new things. We aren't being afraid to have these conversations. Like, I mean, I, I don't even know if I could get my own mom to sit down here and have this conversation with me on camera. You know what I mean? But like, I think it's important because a lot of people wonder the same things. And I, I also agree with you. You know, I believe in a higher power. I got Bible verses tattooed on me as well. But um, I don't believe that there is one set way to worship a God. Yeah, and I think... And, and, and I can't tell anybody to do that. what I'm saying, you know, is there mm -hmm. may... I feel like, you know, a, there are atheists, but right. there are a lot of atheists who will say, like, there's there's something that right. brought me I, here, you right, know what I'm right. saying? They just don't believe in the whole system. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's kind of where, where the gray right. area is, right. because it's like a lot of people, yeah, who believe in that higher power, who right. believe there was some something that is pulling the strings right. and ordering our steps, but... Um, you know, it's just the whole systematic religion. I like agree. It's, it's not far off from right. systematic racism. Right. I agree. Know. I totally agree. <laughs> and I, I've seen a lot of messed up stuff happen in these organized things. And I look at it like this. I don't think that we have lost hope, you know, because that, that's what faith and hope. I don't believe that more people have lost hope. I believe that more people are just not finding hope in that organized way that right. we've been chained to, right, right. you know? I, I would love to see like um, statistics on that, like how many people do say, hey, I don't identify as this anymore, but I do believe in a higher power and I just, you know, I go about yeah, it my own way. Because I feel like, yeah. <laughs> honestly, like, probably the last 10 women I didn't date, you know, they've been spiritual, not religious, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, I, don't, I just think that's what it is now, you know? Yeah. It's more spiritual people than, than religious people because of the hypocrisy and because you know like you can get on you can get on on twitter start the only fans make a whole bag and then like right you know how you supposed to go to church and be like yeah i'm the same way <laughs> <laughs> you, you know it's just a different world we live in social media has changed a lot um, right so yeah I, I i still don't know if i if i can fully accept those those numbers um just because i feel like the the polls probably a little skewed mm. um and I think, you know, if you ask a little more detail to those people who just answered right. no to that question, right. like, you would get more of an answer like that. Right. I definitely agree. All right. Last topic of this episode. Um, we might cut, to, cut this up into parts, but um, I really wanted to talk about this. This is, like, week old news now, but I think the conversation is still going relevant. But I wanted to talk about the um, Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan situation. Okay. Um, I have to talk about it. I want to talk about it. Um, brief rundown, if you don't know, they have been dating, I think, for like a little over a year. Um, and Michael B. Jordan wanted to get serious, and Lori did not want... Sirius has a marriage, and Lori did not want to, and so um, they split. And so a lot of people took sides on that, so I want to hear your side. I want to give my side, and then I, you know, I want to chat about it a little bit. So how do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, you know, I would have to know more, more like details, which I right. feel like I have no right to ask. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the, do you feel like she's own. for the streets? Because that's been the biggest debate. Like, what does that action make somebody for the streets? I mean, come on. I disagree, so I'm not gonna I, come on. I, but I want to know your opinion. Well, well, nah, I, maybe not necessarily. You know, like how how old is Shadi? I don't even know. She's 25. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, hell nah. You know, like yeah. fucking yeah, hell nah. If now if she was 35, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah she for the fucking streets. But 25, nah, you 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 still got life to live. You ain't you don't you might not even know what your right. hobbies are, let alone what you're supposed to be doing with your life. You right. know what I'm saying? So. I don't know. I think Michael B. Jordan has always been just very, like, uh, very calculated and very, right. very mature. I think he knows what you he know wants. What I'm yeah. And that's totally fine. This is how I feel about it. I don't care if you're 35, 45, right? If they didn't go into the relationship, like, this is, it's two different situ situ situations with this. When they were in the talking phase, if he expressed, hey, I'm not dating to date, I'm not dating for fun, I'm dating for the future. 
and she agreed to get in a relationship with him, she's right. totally wrong. Right. She's and I feel totally like, wrong. You know, those are the questions like that you would have to ask in this situation. Right. That, that the public doesn't really have the right. Right. To ask. But they have. They think they have the right to judge. <laughs> and that was my first question when I seen the story break. If, did they talk about marriage? previously before they got into a relationship because if they did totally wrong but if they did not that does not make her for the streets because that's just like let's just say right like you go and propose to your girl right you go propose to your girl tomorrow without talking to her without talking to her about it and she tells you no that's not fucked up on her no, it's not. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it may hurt, but it's not fucked up. But I also, it's also like, what kind of signals was she giving the dude to make him think that, like, that was where they were going? Right. Um, and, and What I, if she's just a really good partner, though? Like, well, we don't know. And see, that's the thing is, like, I got, I got homegirls who, like, they ride or die. Like, they right. can't shit. But, like, I know in my head, like, hey. Like, whatever nigga end up with you, like, I pray for him, you know? But, like, as a homie, like, you A1. Right. Like, I'm calling you when I need you, but, like, yo, guy, like, you you ain't the type to, to get sit down and get married. And it ain't even, like, saying they thoughts or saying right. they this. It's just, like, they ain't those type of people. Just like I got homeboys who, like, they ain't them type of niggas. Right. It's just not going to happen. Exactly. And, I mean, and, and it's just, it just, because it's so... It's always skewed, and that's my whole thing. That's why I even get interested in doing podcast media, all type of stuff. I get interested in it because I'm like, we have to stop skewing things. I don't think, you know, because it turns into, oh, women ain't shit, men ain't shit, and that is not the case. I know both sexes who are not people to settle down. I mean, I'm talking about dudes in their 40s, multiple children who cannot be married. You know, but they will play house, and that's what I call that. I call that playing house. If you're not down yes. with all the other shit, but you're fine with living with each other, splitting shit, and, you know, having a good time, but yeah. when the seriousness comes, it's like, hey, we've been, you know, we've been we've been doing this for, like, four years now, you know? Yeah, if there's yeah. somebody need a ring, you know? And then they get all, like, whoa, you know? like. And I think it also, it's also a thing of trust, you know? Like, social yeah. media has, like, these, when you look at, if you're looking at, like, I'll say if you're looking at, 30 and up mm-hmm. and 30 and below. Mm-hmm. There, There is a fine social media came in in that age, like right in between there. Yeah. Where like the ones who was above 30, like they didn't have to deal with all the like stress of trying to trust somebody in the social right. media age. So their understanding of relationships are completely different than the ones who are coming up here now and seeing all uh, uh, naked women on Instagram every three posts, seeing naked dudes on Instagram every three right. posts, you know, get getting flooded in the DMs by, by people trying to court them and right. shit, having all these options right. across the board, you know, like that just wasn't a thing. Right. Um, until probably like, honestly, what? The last, yeah, ago? the last 10 years, for sure. And so. Because you got to think Instagram came around. So you're probably like senior or just fresh out of high school. Yeah, I was I was yeah. literally like in tenth grade yeah. when like I'm talking about them ugly ass filters. Everybody literally posted what they're doing today, literally, not like thought literally. out posted. Literally. You know, literally. like right. Um, but I do think it's a trusting, and it brings me to like the other part of this. I had like there's this, been this ongoing debate, right? And like, um, and I want I like to look at it. I have to play both sides, right? So you brought up the like half naked posts, right? You know, men and women, they both do it. How do you, like, how do you feel about it? Like, if you're in a relationship, right? Okay. And I want to look at it from two angles. You're in a relationship. Your girl is an influencer and she gets paid to model off bikinis and go on trips and, you know, do these things to where she gets paid to post this stuff. Like if it's, How do you if, feel about that? If it's her job and she got a love for it, she got a passion for it, like, do you, shawty? And, like, I'm going to tell you, like, I date Dons. Like, I know, mm-hmm. I know, like, their inbox is going to be flooded. Mm-hmm. But, like, you just got to be the type of nigga to have that. And same for females. You got to be the type of person that to have that confidence that, like, they picked you for a reason. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, like, fuck it. Like, I've always, I told all my homies, like, I, you know, I, I'd have wrapped it in plenty of songs. Like, if you fuck her, you can keep her. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't, 
I ain't out here like competing with the sneaky links and shit like right. that. Like I know what I am, you know what I'm saying? Right. And if you don't know what you is, you probably shouldn't be fucking around with the top notches, you know? That's gonna right. fuck up your confidence. Right. Right. Um Yeah, I just I, I like to ask that question because I feel like now that we we know I hate to use this. We know when people are being scandalous versus, you know, doing what they do to get paid. You know, whether you're not don't judge people for that, you know, because like, I just seen a podcast interview with someone who's married to an adult film star, and it was very op- eye-opening because they were asking the, like, most craziest questions. You know, any question you could think about asking somebody who married a adult film star. Yeah. But it was so eye-opening because their relationship is nothing like what you would expect. They're like, oh, I don't even, you know, like, you know, and it was just, it was just like the utmost respect. And so I, I, it's like, we judge folks when a lot of these real people, when a lot of people who are really getting money doing this, they carry themselves with value, you know, they respect them part, their partners. So it's like, it's honestly really kind of easy to distinguish between people who are really for the streets. No, then people, real you know, talk, real talk, because I tell you straight up, like, I will, I'll probably never, ever date a stripper, like, if my girl told me she wanted to be a stripper, like, I'd be like, hey, all right, go through mm-hmm. you, you know, but if it was like, okay, I want to, I want to be an Instagram model, I want to uh, do these modeling gigs, I want to do this, I want, I want to get these sponsorships, like, then okay, like, I can understand the business of it, you know, mm-hmm. but, but like, that's again, that's just knowing who you are as an individual and what you can handle. Right. And, and how your confidence is built and, and what you got going on. Because sometimes you just got to walk away from shit, you know? And, and that's why I applaud Michael B. Jordan in this instance because it's not like he fighting. It's not like he right. out here doing interviews about it and shit like that. Like, this is the world spinning right. his love story. You right, know what I'm saying? right. Both of them, because they have it. And that's, and that's the only thing that bothers me. It's like, we be so, as a public, people are so quick to speak out about things. But it's like, how can you truly even speak out of, about something that the people going through or haven't even spoken about? Now, one of them have said it a word about what has happened between them two. And the internet has just spin this to this crazy, like, h- hero versus villain yeah, type story. Yeah. And it's like, they honestly could have mutually agreed, like, hey, like, it's not going the direction that I want it to go. You're yeah. not ready. There's no bad blood. You know, and then it'll be, and then every all the, half these folks will be looking stupid if they pop yeah. out as friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. On, on, on a respectable level to where they're able to be in the same spaces together. You know, because where I feel like it's another thing the internet has contributed to, but toxic relationships. People, I feel like that we're so far Hell from yeah. not being the first thing to be like, hey, they probably honestly handled it like adults, and they could probably be. You know, obviously it's still fresh right now, but like. They probably don't have any animosity towards each other, but we're so used to the internet and everybody, you know, going to the most craziest, toxic level to where, like, nah, they gotta be enemies now. You know, they yeah, gotta, it's, it's yeah. fuck her or fuck him or, you know, I'm like. Nah, and I mean, and I think, I think that's the, that's the thing now, too, is like, um, you know, like, it's, we usually see it and switch the other way. Yeah. To where it's like the dude saying, like, I ain't fucking with it. Yeah. Or, or you know, I didn't want to be a part of that. Yeah. Anymore. So I think a lot of guys are using this as their chance to be like, hey, right, hey, <laughs> that was a stand up nigga. This right. home for the streets, da, 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 da. you know what I'm saying? But it, like you said, they could just had a mutual agreement to where, yeah, like, okay, like, dude, that was that's a stand up nigga, like, right. You know, a lot of dudes, you know, and a, a lot of the dudes that that we see getting getting the fine girls, and we see like in places that that normal people want to be, it's like. They are toxic. Right. You know? So you got to take Michael B. Jordan look at him like, okay, he might be one of the last ones left. Um, and it's sad. He, and not, he, not at all. <laughs> I, I have to, because I was actually just having this conversation with my bro. Like, I have to give uh, I have to give it up to my stand-up dudes, you know? I, you're a stand-up guy. Like, you know, like, don't. We do that too much. We do that to our brothers. We do that to our sisters. We, we, we need to quit doing that. There are a lot of stand-up men and women. There are. But a lot of people have to go through a lot of shit before they decide they want to even get around that or be one. You know, I I, I don't feel like we have a lost hope. Everybody's gone through their stages, but at the end of the day, I know some real stand-up guys. You know, I I know some real stand-up guys. It brings me back to the the conversation we had about Russell Wilson and Future. Yeah, yeah. Um, And 
it's just like what people consider cool, what people don't consider right. cool. Right. And like, um, you know, there, there's a lot of shit going around with Wilson Wilson right now because he just did his like media day. He yeah. He to the Broncos. Yep. You know, and he was looking goofy as shit. Like, <laughs> um, but it's just funny because it's like, dude just got a million dollar contract. Right. Got one of the baddest females, you know. Right. And they still. They Three still, kids. Like, you know, like, you know, I mean. He's still, he still like the face for the square nigga. Right. You know, unfortunately. And, and it's just, I think the lifestyle is separate from the person. 